You might think that a profession that involves meeting patient after patient for the first time is bound to be full of extroverts. But can introverts become physicians? Or maybe the better question is, if they even should. My name is Danny Kalani. I'm a medical student in Canada. I myself identify as fairly introverted. I prefer to spend my time with fewer people that I know well, rather than attending an event where I know no one. I've even been categorized as quiet by some of my teachers and some supervisors that I've had at work. In going through the medical school admissions process, the last step is a series of interviews that required me to talk for nearly three straight hours. Clearly, my introverted personality must have been picked up throughout that lengthy process, and yet I was still selected. So the question is, can medicine be a suitable profession for an introvert? Before we get into unpacking this question, subscribe to the channel for more on medicine as a career, mindsets, and more. Despite the amount of socialization required in medicine, there are numerous highly successful physicians that you're probably familiar with, like Ali Abdal and Dr. Mike, that considered themselves introverts growing up. When Ali Abdal was 16 years old, his school headmaster commented that the vibe that he gave off was unconfident and robotic. Here is a similar clip from an interview with Dr. Mike. Is it true that you used to read books about how to talk to girls? Yes. Um, how to talk to anybody, really. I was always scared of public speaking. I was very nervous speaking to other people. I could go on for a long time about how demanding it can be being a physician in terms of communicating with your healthcare professional colleagues, your patients, as well as their families. But I doubt that anyone is actually questioning this point. Even pathologists and medical microbiologists who are relatively isolated from patient care have to communicate with other physicians on a daily basis. We should also focus on the fact that neither Ali Abdal nor Dr. Mike let it stop them. They both found ways to get around it and they're now fairly comfortable speaking in front of hundreds of people and are able to effectively carry out their duties as physicians for their patients. Throughout the rest of this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what you can be doing today to stop letting being an introvert get in the way of your dreams. Before we can do anything to improve ourselves, we first have to recognize that this is possible. The concept that you can either have a fixed or a growth mindset was proposed by Stanford psychologist, Carol Dweck. The fixed mindset is where you believe that your abilities are innate and unchangeable. While the growth mindset views abilities as improvable through experimentation and practice. To implement any of the changes in this video, you absolutely must adopt a growth mindset. You will need to make decisions that get you doing things that are outside of your comfort zone. You should view failure as an opportunity to learn as opposed to an indication of your value. A phrase that I find is used a little too often is to be yourself. Instead, I'd rather implement a growth mindset to become who I want to be. With the growth mindset in mind, let's move into ways to become more comfortable with situations you're bound to run into if you are pursuing a medical career. Those are things such as interviews, teamwork, and interacting with patients. If you have ever taken an intro psychology course, you've probably run into terms such as exposure therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy. Both have been used to help people overcome fears, phobias, and anxieties. If you are into data, two meta-analyses have shown evidence for the use of exposure therapy for social phobias and social anxiety. I'll link those studies in the description. While exposure therapy can be applied to anxiety disorders, I am making the case that we can also apply it throughout our own lives to reduce the normal amount of anxiety that many introverts face with social encounters. This involves exposing yourself to the thing that causes your anxiety. Starting with less stressful experiences, like making small talk with the barista at your local cafe, to more stressful experiences like job interviews and speaking in front of a large audience. The key is that by building up exposures that are increasingly stressful with a high rate of repetition, you can become more comfortable doing the things that were once extremely stress inducing. In applying this technique, self-experimentation will be key. You should be trying to expose yourself as frequently as possible in situations that put you at just the right degree of discomfort. One way to apply this frequently in your life is by implementing the following rule suggested by David Schwartz from his book, the magic of thinking big. David Schwartz says to make it a rule to speak up at every open meeting you attend. And I might add on to that classes as well for myself and other students. Speak up, say something voluntary at every business conference, meeting, community forum you attend. Make no exception. Comment, 
make a suggestion, ask a question, and don't be the last to speak. Try to be the icebreaker, the first one in with a comment. I started doing this in my last year of university as well as in medical school during my lectures and case-based sessions. Whenever an instructor asked a question, I would always try and be the first to chime in with an answer, regardless of how certain I was that I was right or wrong. There were a few instances where my answers were so wrong that I was outright roasted by the instructor. At the time, I felt a little bit embarrassed until I came to the realization of how we as people pay so little attention to others around us and how in reality everyone is so caught up with their own learning and problems to pay attention to you. This is all a part of building up that confidence and familiarity. I can reassure you that embarrassment fades into the past as you reap the benefits of self-improvement. You might be thinking why is asking or answering questions in class so relevant to becoming a physician. Doctors tend to be the ones either asking or answering questions when seeing patients. So if you can handle questions in a class of tens or hundreds of people, you can also do it with a patient in the comfort of your clinic. In the upcoming future, you might also be worried about medical school interviews and the often dreaded multiple mini interviews or MMIs. During both traditional and multiple mini interviews, you are sure to be tasked with meeting new people, namely your interviewers. I'm sure that many of us would be more comfortable answering interview questions in front of our family or friends as opposed to an interviewer that you have never met before. This is why it is so important to become comfortable with the process of meeting new people. If you've got an interview coming up fast, I've shared some ways that you can quickly build your confidence in another video that I will link here. If your interview is still a good ways away, my suggestion to you is to join some clubs or groups where you'll get the chance to meet with people that you've never met before and chat about some topics that you have a common interest in. That way you become comfortable with an environment that is as similar as possible to an interview where you would be matched up with an interviewer that you have probably never met before and given an agreed upon topic to discuss. I found that joining cultural clubs and attending their events without my friends was a great way to do this while also building some cultural competency. The club would host dinners where you were seated next to a complete stranger, which made for a great opportunity to start a conversation. If you are looking for a good way to start a conversation, start with an open question. Open questions are those that give the other person the opportunity to respond with an infinite range of answers. Initially, you should be careful to avoid closed questions that only give them a few possible responses, such as yes or no questions. The only way to gain competency in doing anything is through repetition. Going back to our initial examples of Dr. Mike and Ali Abdal, both mention how they took to reading self-help books as a way of striving for growth. While I am also known to indulge in the occasional self-help book, I want to impress upon you that you must find ways to practice what you learn from those books in your daily life. Otherwise, you're bound to stick with your old ways. To end off, I'll leave you with one of my favorite quotes from Bruce Lee, where he said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And subscribe to the channel for more great content like this on pursuing medicine as a career, mindsets, and more. Thanks team, and I'll see you all in the next one.